Hello, and welcome to another Game Developers Vlog, and quite a significant one at that, because now um, this program is more or less ready to use for making graphics for my upcoming next upcoming game project. I have added all the features, as far as I can remember, <laughs> that I wanted in it for this purpose. So I'm, I'm in a Again, in a sort of celebratory mood. That's uh, that's been consistent for every day so far. Uh, well, yesterday I was uh, I did get snagged on a problem, but I solved it this morning. Uh, earlier this evening would be correct to say. And uh, I'm not sure I'll remember everything to show you everything I've added since last time because I've added a lot. But but I'll give it a try. Um, and so. First of all, let's load in a picture that you might be familiar with, this one, which I made yesterday and, uh, and then put on social media and on Patreon, so it's very possible you've seen it before. Now, uh, the, the games I want to make, initially at least, and possibly all the ones, I want them to have a certain feel, and uh, I want them to have uh, uh, the feeling of a lower resolution, meaning bigger pixels, because I like that. Uh, it gives me a good feeling <laughs> because I grew up with uh, programs that that ran on a lower resolution. That's probably a big reason for it. Uh, but it has, it, it is there is a distinct aesthetic to that which I think just about everyone can um, appreciate. And I want to experiment with different sizes of pixel. But on a modern system like this, the the, t the pixels are very tiny, so. Uh, it is absolutely possible to to draw you know in very fine increments all the time and that could make it so that i would accidentally create a picture that is you know doesn't quite adhere to the sort of strict grid uh, pattern which a lower resolution would have so in order to help me adhere to that i created a tool um, which I'm going to show you after showing you another um, tool, which is the zoom tool. You can zoom quite a bit now. Um, well, twice. That's uh, level one zoom, and this is level two. It uh, <laughs> it repositions the sort of camera to the upper left corner of the picture every time you zoom. I might work with that later, but uh, I don't I don't find it necessary. Especially as most pictures I'll be working on will be smaller than this one, so. Uh, then it will make even less of an impact. Anyway, you can see it like so. If I zoom out one level here, do keep an eye now on on this guy, on, on the outlines, especially of this guy. As I press the force resolution or something function key, like so. Now it it appears as if, as if he's gone out of focus a bit. Uh, I have uh, I have told the program to to adhere to a more to a, a strict, uh, arbitrarily imposed uh, size of pixel, and uh, and adjust all the all the color data in the picture to that pattern. I I won't be using it, most likely at least, to adjust pictures of this size. Uh, as I said, I will be working with smaller pictures, because he's he's much too large really to be <laughs> to have this kind of resolution. Now, what I want to do with this is, um, is just help me, uh, so that I, you know, if if I if I'm unsure as to whether all the pixels are, are adhering to such a pattern, I can just press this and have the program adjust for me. That will likely cancel out some details I put in, but then I'll know where where I can't put certain details, and then then I have to make a choice, uh, what to include or exclude. Now, um, I'd like to show you another feature, um, perhaps the last one that's really cool out of these. I made it a little bit easier to choose color as well. <clears throat> Actually, um, now you see uh, this, increase that, uh, this square there, the sort of incredibly bright blue, um, that, that shows the color with which I draw. Okay. Can see that that's the one I, I'm using right now, um, and if I change, let's see here, 
the red here to uh, number 5, it disappears. Um, that means, because now I am using the translucent color, uh, whenever this program draws a picture, and it does that several times per second, maybe you can see these, um, these numbers here flickering, that's because they use a different kind of graphical algorithm. I haven't made a writing algorithm yet. Uh, so I use the standard for them, and they draw that on top of the picture I make. Uh, <laughs> hence, you see them flicker. Um, every time they flicker, actually, probably more often than that, this, this entire screen is redrawn. Now, anyway, when it does that, it checks for this one color and uh, in the picture, and if it comes upon, upon a, a pixel of that color, it doesn't draw it at all. So instead, you see the background. Uh, the entire background is actually covered in that sort of beige, but then I draw the, the picture I'm making on top of that. So if I flood fill this, you can see the usefulness, I hope. I'm going to zoom in here and uh, remove the last sort of pixel. Um, tick, tick. There we go. This can, of course, be very useful if I want to have him, let's say, uh, superimposed on another picture which you'll see in most uh, games, uh, one picture on top of another, or rather an object in front of other objects or a background. And I want to have him move across that without obscuring, you know, if I didn't use such a technique, there would be a, a black box around him all the time. And that actually happened in some early video games when they didn't have enough you know, power to, to bother with translucency. But... Uh, that kind of behavior was basically eliminated by the mid to late 80s. So <laughs> I think it looks quite neat like this, uh, him standing in front of the of the background. It sort of makes him stand out even more, even even though he there's less contrast. Uh, it pleases me to see the the effect of my uh, of my work like so. Anyway, that's. Uh, an update on, on what the program can do. I think I think I covered just about everything. Uh, there are details, of course, that you might not be aware of, but a lot of the work was sort of just making these things work, the, um, the zooming and the changing the size of the cursor and, uh, uh, and th that adjustment function, which adjusts the size of pixels. It was a lot of fun, though when I got it to work. And sometimes during development too, when, when when it did strange things and I felt I was sort of on the right track. Anyway, um, as for the weekend, I shall be working at the hospital, so not much will be happening uh, compared to the last several days here. Uh, although I think, since uh, that's also a reason I'm so happy with this, because now that I the program is so ready to use, I, I can spend uh, just, you know, an hour um, uh, uh, of an evening uh, making some little drawing, uh, making some, some graphics, perhaps for, the, for an upcoming game. And Next week I shall start programming that. And uh, I, I know I promised to, to paint this week, but boy oh boy was this absorbing, <laughs> absorbing. Um, but <laughs> I do promise I'll paint next week. Next week, I won't have any particular problems to solve. I'll be working, I'll be making graphics with this program, but I, I won't have the, the frustration I often feel when I have a problem to solve, meaning I, I can't, it's difficult for me to step away from it. Um, but when I don't have a problem to solve, when I'm just making things, and I, uh, it's much easier for me to take a break from one thing and do another. I've neglected several other things as well, uh, my, my language studies and such. Didn't do anything this week. I look forward to doing all the different <laughs> things a bit more uh, next week. And I hope you look forward to it. But I also hope you enjoyed seeing this and seeing the growth of this program over the last several days because I was quite amazed at how, how well this went. Uh, such a smooth development. I'm happy and proud. With that, I wish you guys uh, a happy weekend and uh, goodbye. <laughs>